we're here on the beautiful, pristine beaches of the Philippines. The center of the world biodiversity. The Golden Pearl to me is a, a, a beautiful gem. Um, it can be beautiful jewelry, but beyond that, I think it stands for something much deeper and much greater. We're about to go out and film something that hasn't been filmed before by anybody. You need a site, you need good oyster, you need technique, you need shell management, but that's not enough. If you only consider your work as a job and nothing else, you will never produce beautiful pearls. Covering a vast area of the Pacific and containing over 7,000 islands, the Philippines is considered one of the most biodiverse regions of the world. We traveled south from the capital city of Manila to the Jewel Mer Pearl Farms to see how the Golden South Sea Pearl is created. Well, I'm Josh Bazaar. I'm out here as a guest of Jewel Mer Company. Uh, to, they're going to take me around, show me their pearl farms, what the amazing things they've created on this island. 100% depends on nature. This farm has been destroyed uh, twice by typhoon, like a giant twister which carried the wolf out. It's incredible. We were going to close because we just had borrow heavily at that time. All the workers beg us not to close the farm and they all agreed to work, I think, three to four months without salary as long as they were fed and then we were able to rebuild. Before Christmas, we were just given the Christmas party and the next day the farm was gone. Never be so self-confident and believe that uh, uh, planet Earth owes us so much. We have no, no rights, we have only obligation and we should be humble enough to know that we have no guarantee. All right, guys, we're here today with Doris Domingo. She is the head marine biologist with uh, Jules Mer Company in the Philippines. Out of all the avenues you could have done with your background in marine biology, what made you choose to go into pearls? Well, the first place is that aside from the pearl farming, we are also promoting for the environmental uh, protection also. That's the advantage of in the pearl farming. Uh, we because we have to maintain those uh, far from pollution, illegal fishing. So at the same time, there is this ecosystem balance in the pearl farming. So that makes me love to work here. This is where all the work is done at these farms on these little islands. These farms are just massive. This is one farm, that whole thing we just passed. That's one farm. And I'm talking from these mountains, all, the whole mountain range, you know what I mean? It's one farm. Uh, on the farm is great because uh, there are no two days alike, you know. On the farm, uh, daily activities for me include, you know, diving to cleaning shell, you know, mixing cement for, a, for an anchor, motivational speeches to the workers to, to get them hyped up about their job and, and not forget why, why they are here. Every, every aspect of my job for me I, I love and, and I feel really blessed that, that um, I'm able to, uh, to live that, um, to, to live through that, yeah. From the minute you set foot on, on the island here, surrounded by absolute pure beauty, it's special, it's almost a magical feeling. T time is relative on a pro farm, you know? <laughs> Just the, the simple fact that for one pearl, we have to wait five years, you know? Three years of growing the oyster, two years of cultivating the pearl. It's, it's also kind of nerve-wracking to know that you won't know the result of what you're doing today till about five years, you know? Going to bed at night and thinking, oh, did I do that right? And, but it always keeps you on your toes and, and keeps you wanting to improve and keeps that quest for the, for the perfect pearl. 
and once you succeed, the reward is worth the effort and sacrifice. Many people live in very remote conditions, sometimes away from their families without much access to comfort of modern times. But I don't think they envy people in the cities or people who have all that comfort and don't enjoy that, that fire that keeps us together. Farm for five o'clock in the morning wake up. I mean, man, it's early. We're about to go out and film something that hasn't been filmed before by anybody. They go out, they bear the rough seas first thing in the morning. They pull the nets up out of the water. The shells are then removed. If you're wondering why he has a knife in his hand, it's because the shells attach themselves to the net by filament-like object called the byssus. If you were to try to pull the shell from the net, you could potentially damage the gonad of the shell. The gonad is not only the sexual reproductive organ of the shell, but it's also the pearl-producing organ of the shell. So you have to be very careful. Second stage of what happens on the floating rafts is that these shells have to be cleaned. The marine organisms that attach themselves to these shells compete for the nutrients in the water. So what we have to do is remove them from the shells. After we scrape them off and remove them from the shell, they're collected and then dried and used as fertilizer, as nothing on the pearl farm is ever wasted. This is the last stage before the shells are actually put back in the water. Here we're measuring to see whether the shells are large, medium, or small. The small shells are actually too small to be grafted, so we have to wait until they grow a little bit and put them in this pile over here. Just before the shells are ready to go back to the water, they have to be put back in the net. Each net is differentiated by the tag. This is a red tag, which means it's medium. The large shells will be in a net with a blue tag. Manipulating 10-month-old shells, this will be turned over to the pearl operation, de uh, the operation department. Um, these shells will be operated um, after 18 months or 20 months, depending on the, on the classification of shells. After the shells are cleaned, they have to be x-rayed to see if there's an abnormally large pearl inside of it. So what he's going to do here is he's going to take the shell, he's going to put it in the x-ray machine. The machine will have an image that will go to a monitor located up here. So that's a 12 millimeter pearl. Since these shells aren't yet ready for harvest, they will be put back in the nets for further cultivation. We return to the lab to talk to Doris about the science behind breeding the pearl producing oysters. First thing is we should have a healthy oysters before we do the breeding. So actually these oysters are hermaphrodites. So she explained that the oysters begin their lives as hermaphrodites. But when they grow for adult stage, some of them will shift to female. These oysters are dependent on the two factors, that is the food and the water temperature. When these two are favorable, they undergo external fertilization. The color is white. That's By looking under a microscope, we're able to determine the sex of the oyster. There should be a good sunlight for us to see the color. There is a difficulty in distinguishing them. What we do is that we have to extract and check in the microscope. This will be then their different stages and they will be transferred to the sea. So two months, 12 months, then after they'll be ready for the pearl grafting. This kind of color actually in the wild population is very rare. One percent or less than one percent and we have to find that. So if the environment is not favorable for them, this kind of color will not show up. Doris then explained to us that less than one percent of oysters living in the wild possess the trait of having a golden lip. Right. No, you can now you see it live. It's very interesting. It's hard work here at the Jewelmer Pearl Farm. Guys, what they're doing over here is building rafts. All the rafts that they used to work on, they actually build themselves. They build everything on the island here themselves. He's here to make sure that all our divers are at the safety standard. How to take care of themselves when they go out to another world down there. 
The constant assault by Mother Nature and the remote conditions make farming nature's most beautiful gem a daring risk for everyone involved. The simple act of working so close to nature and in a positive way, which is preserving the environment, and at the same time, the fruits of your labor being such an amazing living gem, uh, I think that's inspiring for them on, all on its own. You know? The Ring of Fire is a highly volcanic area along the Asian Pacific coastline. Millions of years ago, the tectonic plates near the Philippines created islands of fertile soil that are rich in volcanic ash. Volcanic ash is important because over time it releases nutrients that makes the soil fertile. That is the reason for the abundant life in this region. A healthy ecosystem makes for a healthy oyster, and the Philippines is one of the most biodiverse regions of the world. The majority of this complex and powerful ecosystem is underwater. Well, they go totally together. You can produce good pearl in an endangered or polluted environment. It's very difficult to give you an actual statistic and what is man and nature. But on the long term, it's really a mutual respect and I would say a joint venture between man and nature which will allow you to produce the most beautiful pearl in the world. Uh, we have an obligation uh, with the neighboring villages that uh, we really have to preserve and conserve our environment. Not just for the pearl farm, yeah, but for everyone. As biologists, it's <laughs> primarily we, we have to preserve the, yeah. the environment. The Philippines is the correspondent of the Amazonia for the underwater natural resources. It's a unique place in the world. The moment, and if the world does not mobilize to protect the biodiversity in the Philippines, it's not just the Philippines we lose, it's the whole world community which will lose the best source of marine life in the world. So we are ringing the bell, guys, and the pearl is the indicator of wake up, uh, people of the planet Earth because you have done so much damage and if you continue, well, you won't have pearl anymore, but that's maybe not so vital, but with the pearl many other species will disappear. Pearl is the indicator of the health of the planet. Once you don't have pearls, there's something going wrong in nature and that should be a big wake up, wake up call for us. Having the feeling to cooperate not just for the interest of our organization, but also for the neighboring communities. We can't prosper if the neighbor uh, around in the, those poor remote islands around Pearl Farm sites, which are very isolated and get very little government support. Uh, we can't pro progress if those people also don't get uplifted at the same time. For me, when I, when, I, when I discovered this passion inside me for this work we do, I felt that a lot of who I am, where I am today, and where the company is today is um, because of the people behind the, the Philippine South Sea Pearl and the work we do here. have been working here for 13 years already. Yeah, and for me it's 16 going to 17 this June. I am resident manager of this farm, yeah, taking care of all the 200 people around here. Are you the big boss in charge around here? Mm, perhaps, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Clara is the one who trained me for about two years and then I was transferred to other farms as farm manager for four years. Uh, we have a couple on the <laughs> island here. She trained me as a monitoring officer. Is that right? Yes, she was very strict at that time. <laughs> oh, <Even no>. <laughs> <laughs> here we do run a foundation called Safe Palawan Seas Foundation. More to educate the local communities and give them the tools to improve their livelihood and at the same time protect nature. Save Palawan Seas Foundation was formed to support a better quality of life for all who rely on the marine and aquatic resources of the province of Palawan while maintaining the delicate balance in nature. With 40 US dollars, you can start a project and have income to feed a family of uh, maybe 8 to 10 people. And at the same time, you can sell 50% of your production while feeding your own family. So the return for a very small investment you become organic farmer with less than $100 per, per head. Making the soil healthy, eventually we're making the plants healthy. So we're teaching them how to make organic fertilizers so they can grow vegetables, they can sell it to their neighbors, they can sell it in, the in town. 
we have how many seven people full time uh, employed for teaching. But if we had more, we could extend. We have people from Mindanao who want to come here and train. We don't have enough funds, and we are not the government. We cannot be a substitute to a big organization. But there are many people who want to come to train. Unfortunately, we don't have. We have the facility, but not enough financing to expand the training. We could have people from all provinces, and this center could be turning permanently. And definitely, it will change the way the planet goes. To begin with, being in a family company is, is great because you work with people you love every day. He said, uh, the only way you can get the perfect golden pearl is through a golden heart. Before we left, the staff at Julmer put on a show for us. The divers and technicians, biologists and boat captains showed us the depth of the Filipino culture. I was very surprised when they asked me to come dance. So I jumped over those two sticks like my life depended on it. I didn't fall, so I'd chalk that up as a success. Well, at first you have to understand the uniqueness of the Philippine culture and character. Philippine people are among the most artistic and talented and creative in the world. Also the most hospitable people that you can meet on this planet. And I know, because I've stopped in nearly every island and with a lot of place uh, hospitable, but they are also blessed by a unique nature the Nobel Prize of Hospitality should be attributed one day. Part of the magic of the Julmer Pearl Farms is the way that they've integrated themselves into the culture on these islands. They've provided jobs and opportunities for the local people, taught them ways to farm and replenish the land while acting as stewards of the surrounding seas and islands and helping to maintain the delicate balance between man and nature. There's amazing people out here. There's, there's camaraderie, there's friendships, there's family. It, it's, just a, it's, just a, it's just a great thing that's been built out here. It's a great community, a strong community. How can you not be passionate when you're surrounded with golden heart and golden people? When I see someone wearing a pearl, it, it warms my heart. And personally, I hope, I hope they, I, I want them to know what, what the real story behind that pearl they have on their neck is. You know, I, I think, I think every every pearl lover deserves to know the real story, because that gem that they have around their neck is 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 so much more than just a piece of jewelry. And I, I think it's really important for that message to to get across. There's one message that I could tell people that are interested in the South Sea Pearl. Not only does it come from the most beautiful place in the world, not only are the people here taking that gem from such a natural environment, they're giving more than they're taking from the environment. They're, they're replenishing life around here. They have a duty not only to the sea life, not only to the land, but to the people as well. I think that, that that's something that people should know about. <laughs>